What's up, guys? How are you feeling? Great. Uh, just got locked my Mac. Give me a second. So, we are going to be talking about design today. And uh, I will share with you some of my experience of running a theme shop. Uh, it's, sorry. A theme shop called Theme Patio, and I will share you with you some insights of designing themes and uh, some mistakes I've made along the way. So hopefully you won't make the same mistakes and uh, save yourself like several years of your life. So um, it all started uh, back in 2011 when uh, I was working on a project for a client, and I discovered those theme marketplaces. Uh, and the idea that I can create themes and sell them instead of working on one-time projects uh, inspired me so much that uh, I quickly just jumped to Photoshop and started creating layouts. I created uh, this first theme, uh, tried to create this first theme, and uh, created a front page, then created another page and another one. And uh, it took me about, to be honest, six months, because I was working on client projects at the same time, I was working in a printing company, and this was like a side, side thing for me. And uh, after, after I've done all that, I realized that those pages, they, they don't align. And I didn't even have the idea of what this theme should do and for, uh, like, for who I am building this theme. So I thought that, uh, it, I do have these layouts. I need to develop them, and I don't really know how to do that. So it will probably take me even more time to learn. So I s like started uh, learning how to build themes, and it took me even more time to learn WordPress and uh, to like understand how how it works, how uh, actions, filters, and all those things work. And it took me another like several months, and after. After that, without like after a year of work and realizing that I don't have a product to sell, I thought that I need another kind of approach because uh, uh, this approach that I had really didn't work. So, oh, sorry. Okay. So. I decided that I need to research the market and uh, understand uh, what kind of themes I can build to, uh, uh, I mean, there are like many kinds of themes, one big themes like, that try to sell, uh, solve all kinds of problems and small themes. And I understand that being a one man theme shop, I cannot, I, I cannot create uh, big projects, big, big themes. So, I thought that I can create uh, niche themes that would be dedicated to one problem. So uh, I decided that my approach at this time should be uh, this. I need to ask why I design a theme. And this is really important, because uh, if, you have, if you have the answer to this question, uh, you can filter all your design decisions through, through this question. And, uh, the simple answers to, to it can be uh, like this. You can design a theme to showcase your work, or to sell products, or to promote an event. And the wrong answers to this question are like make it look cool, or earn a lot of money, or uh, include more options than another theme. And basically, this uh, like three-letter uh, uh, answers will lead you to nowhere. And if you design themes uh, with a clear understanding of why you're designing it, it probably will get you further than without understanding, and uh, like I did with my first theme. So once you have answered to this question, there is another uh, very important uh, question that you need to answer before you even get to design. And this question goes like this, who you designed the theme for? And it is very tricky, because uh, what I see uh, that is that most uh, many developers and theme shop owners uh, tend to think that 
they are designing themes and creating themes for people who purchase their themes or download them for free. But in reality, uh, I believe that we as theme shop owners, theme designers, theme developers, we create themes for actual people who visit the website and not for people who purchase their themes. But uh, we need to find balance so that people who uh, create websites themselves and uh, can also do it without any problems. So these are top answers to uh, the question, who we design the theme for. And the wrong answers to this question is like people who buy the theme or like parents to uh, make uh, <laughs> them proud of you. All right, so this is uh, like top two questions that you that I believe you need to answer before you get to uh, design anything. Now moving, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so once you understand who you designed this th the theme for, you understand the expectations of those people. You understand what questions do they have, what fears do they have, and this really helps you to filter your design decisions as well. All right, so now moving to actually how to design the theme once you have those uh, questions on why and who. All right, so the first step in uh, designing a theme, uh, like in my approach that I learned by uh, creating websites for clients, for, uh, for my own theme shop and reading books, is to create a sitemap. Site, simple sitemap site map may look something like this. Each uh, rectangle represents a single page and uh, basically what sitemaps gives you is a big picture of a project. Uh, you can see the user's journey, journey to, uh, towards the conversion uh, where he uh, converts from site visitor to a subscriber or to a customer and something, something else what you're trying to achieve. It also gives you a number of pages that you need to design and it is it can be very helpful when you need to put a quote on your on your work uh, if you're doing the design for for a client because uh, once you know how many pages uh, you need to design you can like give an estimate on uh, how much time do you need and uh, this will help you uh, to understand the project better so the next step is create wireframes and uh, it's may, it may sound really uh, like simple, but uh, without wireframes, it is uh, still hard to understand what actually you need to design. And uh, what wireframes give you is the ability to iterate over many ideas quickly. You don't, we don't design yet, we exploring. We uh, can uh, understand what we need to design in future. So wireframes give you more detailed uh, picture of a project and uh, also understanding of what design elements you can reuse. And it is very helpful because uh, it, it will save you much time uh, during the design process and also during the development because uh, when you have those designed beforehand, uh, when you have those elements beforehand, when you understand what elements uh, are, you, you can like create them uh, and uh, basically create multiple pages from, with them uh, when you're designing. So, and this is like an example of a wireframe. Uh, it is very important to create wireframes quickly because like I said, we're not designing yet, we're exploring ideas. We can, uh, we need to spend like two minutes on each page and not, not more than two minutes because uh, uh, time is time is money. Time is everything we have, and this is an example of uh, a, uh, as I think, not a very good wireframe because you see all those shades and images. It looks like a design already. You don't need to 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 use Photoshop to to create uh, to go further. All right. Next step uh, is to start with the style guide. Again, we're not go designing just yet we are creating a style guide. And what style guide gi gives us is uh, uh, the ability to uh, create basic elements that we can reuse later. And what we can include in the style guide is like basic typography, headings, paragraph, footnotes, 
block quotes and other typography elements. Uh, interaction elements, like buttons, like f uh, input fields, text areas, checkboxes. And don't forget that uh, those have multiple states. Uh, it's also important to design those multiple states as well. Uh, also, like I said, in, in the style guide, we can, we can include uh, other reusable elements, like uh, images, uh, if they have captions, or user profiles, uh, or model windows, or notifications, and things like that. All right, now, once we have the understanding of why we design the project, of who we design it for, we have those, uh, the, the site map, we have the wireframes, and we have the style guide. At this point, it is really, really easy to create uh, uh, the pages. And by the way, if you're using, uh, if you have scan on your iPhones, you can uh, scan this code and look at the basic uh, style guide that I have in my latest theme. So, at this point, uh, you may ask me why your, your talk is about design, and you're not like telling us about typography, uh, about typography rules, about color schemes and grids and things like that. And uh, the reason for this is that I already gave a talk on typography at WordCamp US in 2015, and uh, you can watch that. But also because there are people and who can teach you about typography and grids much better than I can do. And once you read the book called Elements of Typography Style, which I totally recommend, uh, you will understand how typography works, what basic rules there are, and how to use them. And the same goes for grid system and graphic design. It's a perfect, great book, and uh, it applies to uh, printed, uh, like graphic design and web design, and uh, if you think of it uh, deeply. All right, fun stuff. When we have the style guide, when we have uh, sitemap and wireframes, we can actually create pages. We can actually get to design. At this point, uh, we are all designers, right? We have the, we imagine our, how, how the website will look. And it will really take not too much time to, to create pages with the basic elements that uh, we already have. So my advice uh, at this point is to uh, start with uh, the conversion pages, like the pages when people actually purchase the product or become subscribers or uh, uh, add comments to your blog post, because these are actually the pages where magic happens. These are pages that we... Uh, that are most important for the project. And if you design those pages, first you have like more, uh, uh, how do I say it? Uh, it's really easy to, to start uh, from, from the bottom and go to the top because you have the ability to test your style guide and uh, to make adjustments to it. And this is actually, well, usually this is my approach and you can test it and see if it works for yourself. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that people uh, ask is what software to use to design themes. And the answer is simple. You need to use software that you are most efficient with. And because I have a graphic design background, I work for the print company, I like InDesign because it has great, but, uh, great uh, tools for working with styles. You can create styles for most of, uh, for all your uh, text elements and object elements, and then reuse them. And it's really uh, efficient for me. But also, uh, Sketch is a great tool. And it's easier to learn Sketch than to learn in design if you're just starting out. Uh, another great tool to design is uh, Adobe XD, Experience Design. It's kind of a new tool, and it tries to, like, uh, beat sketch, but uh, I'm not sure if it's going to happen. Uh, and what, what it is good at is uh, prototyping. Basically, you can create layouts with working buttons and input fields and show it to your client or test it yourself. Uh, Photoshop, everybody knows Photoshop. It uh, has been around for ages. And if you're good at Photoshop, there's nothing wrong with uh, designing websites in it. And uh, there's nothing wrong 
with designing in Google Chrome with HTML and CSS. If you have the understanding of the project, and if you are your own client, uh, like I did with uh, my latest team, I had the wireframes, I had the idea, and it's really, uh, it was really fast to uh, create the website with HTML and CSS right away without trying to design project, design all pages because I um, had the idea in mind. So fun mistakes to avoid that I wanted to share because uh, um, it's, so you, you don't make them. Wow, this ribbon looks so cool. I need it on my website too. Uh, it was like my approach to designing my first theme, and basically it looked like some elements taken from all over the internet and s like squeezed into one theme, and even my mom didn't like it. So you, <laughs> you, you need to understand why you're adding this or that element to, 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 the, to the design, because uh, if it serves the purpose, if it like helps to uh, sell products or convert site visitors to subscribers, then go ahead and edit. If not, then maybe you should try something else. All right. Um, I have designed 56 layouts of my minimal portfolio theme, and I need to design 23 more. Not ready just yet. This was uh, my mistake when I designed Maker, one of my first themes uh, that actually got released before after that one that one. Uh, the, the first team, and uh, I really I designed every single page uh, for that theme, and I remember I spent like three months just on design. But if if you think about it, if you if you have the style guide and you have uh, the basic uh, design for a single page, and you need to design, for example, a page for uh, attachment, it doesn't take you much time to do it straight in HTML and CSS if you are developing your theme yourself. Uh, maybe if you're working, working on a new version of YouTube, this is the right approach, but like for real people, like regular people like you and me, it's uh, probably just going to steal your time. All right, I'm not sure what margin size to use, 1M or 1.125M, and I need to spend three hours to experiment. This really doesn't help <laughs> to, it, and it, probably doesn't matter that much. And if you come across a uh, question when you design something, mm. think of it this way. Does it help to sell products? Does it help to get new subscribers? This like difference in the margin? If you can't answer straight away, um, prob th there are two scenarios. First, it doesn't matter. And uh, the second, you need to test it. And in both ways, you need to ship the product to, to actually find out. And the best way to find out is to get feedback from, from your, uh, I don't know, site visitors, people who download your theme. And I had 20 updates to Maker since uh, some, I'm something close to 20. Uh, since I first released it, and I did those updates based on feedback. And if I were to, like, if I were, if I tried to uh, get everything right from the first time, it would probably not even get released by, by this time. So, wrapping this all up, I would encourage you to don't get too stressed about margins and ribbons and stuff like that, and keep the big picture in mind. So uh, this is all I have for today. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Dimitri. We are in the very fortunate, luxurious position of having lots of room for questions. So um, I think uh, let's go to the floor of questions. And straight away, we have someone at the microphone uh, on that side, and then we'll come across to you, sir. So yes, over there at the microphone. Do you want to bring the house lights up a little, the stage lights down a touch so we can see people? Because it kind of, thank you, brilliant. Yes, sir. Right, uh, thanks so much for your talk. Uh, super interesting. Uh, question that I have is, uh, you mentioned that you were on the theme shop, so could you talk a little bit about um, what went between releasing your first theme and making your first sale? 
how, how did it feel like, or uh, what's like, exactly the question? What, what went into it? What do you have to do? How was the setup? Like, how oh, do you go from that how, to how, selling? How did I get from zero to the first sale? Uh, that was like a way, long way of doing things over and over again and in, a, in, in a very painful way because uh, First, I wanted, to, I, I wanted to release a theme on one of the marketplaces, and then uh, I got rejected multiple times because uh, the idea of creating simple themes is not like the most popular nowadays. So what I thought that I can create my own theme shop and uh, create a sample version of the first theme and then create a pro version of, 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 the, of the Steam and to basically give the sample version for free. And if people liked it, they would want to upgrade. And uh, this is how it went. And it took me about, uh, I don't know, half of the, uh, six months probably, maybe, maybe more, to go from zero to building theme shop and to building a theme and then to, to the first sale. And it felt really, I don't know, I, I felt really happy when, when it happened because uh, I had this idea of building, of building a theme shop and then when it really happened, I, I couldn't believe it. It was like, like magic. Uh, could you tell us what plugins and tools you use to sell? I use uh, Easy Digital Downloads for uh, selling themes and uh, for updating, I use EDD software licensing plugin which helps to keep themes updated uh, for uh, paid versions of themes because once people download them, they can use the license code that connects my webs their website with my website and then once the, theme is the new version of the theme is released, they can uh, just click update and it gets updated. And this really helps to uh, keep themes secure and uh, up to date. Awesome, thanks a lot. Thank you. Nice little uh, name jet for EDD there. Get well soon, Brad. We know you've got a cold and you would be here. Uh, take care, buddy. Right. So, you know he had a cold? It's terrible. Couldn't fly. Really <laughs> business. Uh, yes, question over there, sir. Hi, Dimitri. It's Sami here. Hi, Sami. Uh, I have a couple of questions. They are kind of related. Uh, how do you pick what kind of niche theme are you building and uh, what kind of themes have been most successful for you? Um, I, so the first question is how I pick the niche, right? Yeah. Uh, with the first theme maker, it's a portfolio theme. I was actually scrape, like they say, scrape your own itch. I needed a portfolio theme that looked really simple and uh, would work fast without like too many options. And I couldn't find the theme that I liked. I liked some layouts uh, of themes, but uh, I also thought that. If I can create the theme for myself, I would probably there are, there probably are people who will want to use it as well, and it worked really well. I did create this first first theme and use it for my own website, and uh, yeah, this is how I picked the niche for the first theme. Uh, for the second theme, uh, which is a theme for uh, small businesses, is that also kind of related to the first one. I had a client who needed a uh, theme for, uh, for their uh, event or uh, some, I don't remember exactly what, what the event was, but the idea was that they needed a theme that could uh, look like a landing page and that they could have multiple sections on the front page. And I thought that this idea is uh, not like uh, uncommon and many people want to do the same and uh, want to have the same website and this is how counter like came to life and uh, yeah and for the third theme that I released yesterday is also uh, I wanted to ditch the portfolio because uh, I switched to building themes and wanted to run a blog and I created this theme for myself and also my sister wanted to use it so uh, Three themes came from the uh, like uh, from the needs of me, me and my family and my clients. So uh, I'm not sure what 
theme I'm going to build next, but it's probably going to be a WooCommerce theme because uh, this is uh, something that many people are interested in nowadays. And uh, yeah. And what was the second question? Uh, what kind of themes have been the most popular for you? Uh, uh, well, at this point, uh, the first theme that I released. Maker, which is a portfolio theme, is uh, the most popular because uh, uh, I guess because it's simple and because it doesn't have much options and it has like its own. Uh, um, there are certain people that are interested in in this kind of themes, and uh, uh, I believe this is uh, why it, it is more popular than the other themes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question over on this side. Yes, sir. Hiya, uh, thank you. Great talk. Um, thank you. You touched on this a little bit. I hear from folks that are new to development and design that they want to become the next theme forest or mojo marketplace mm -hmm. rock star. And I was curious how you would respond to someone like that. Um, well, this is a tricky question. Um, well, this is my opinion on, on uh, going to Theme Forest now or other marketplaces. I might might be completely wrong because I'm not selling themes on Theme Forest, but uh, I think that if you want to be successful on Theme Forest now, you need to kind of have a team of developers and designers who would create like a big product because this is something what I see uh, is popular on Theme Forest. And uh, themes that I like to build, and uh, like uh, themes from my favorite theme shops, like, for example, Array Themes, uh, they are not doing as good as those that are on the top of the uh, featured page on Theme Forest. But it doesn't mean that you can't create a successful theme shop without marketplaces, because uh, if you have other business models, it will still work if you think of the ways how to uh, connect with your audience, how to reach uh, people who would potentially uh, use your themes. So yeah, this is well, my take. The follow-up to that would be if they do pursue it and they're just starting off, what kind of design skills and development level and ability would they need to be successful? On marketplaces? Um, well, and just in general, in actually being able to build a theme? Well, I think that you need to understand the audience you are building a theme for and what kind of problems you are trying to solve with it. Because generally, people, what I see, uh, people try to solve multiple problems at once. And this leads to themes that kind of don't solve anything. And uh, if you like target specific audience with small theme that uh, solves a single problem, this is what I see uh, is the best approach today. Maybe if you have a team of developers and you want to go pursue a uh, general theme that does multiple things, then it's the way to go. But for me, it's niche themes, small themes that do one thing, but, it, but do this thing very good. Thank you. Thank you. OK, do we have any more questions? From, oh, yes, one more. Yes, yes sir. Uh, what kind of theme are you going to work on next? <laughs> That's tricky. I think it's going to be a WooCommerce theme. I, I, I really liked, I wanted to release it before the theme that I released yesterday, but uh, I it really, I need to research more on how to, what kind of WooCommerce themes are going to be uh, best in the next few years, maybe. So yeah, it's probably going to be a WooCommerce theme. Okay, thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you. Um, thanks for sharing those things. I, I have to be honest,